What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Tomatin 18. Stick around. So we're looking at an 18 year old today. This is the Tomatin 18. I think this is the third review of a Tomatin I've done on this channel. I've looked at the 12 before. Didn't like it. I've looked at the Legacy before, which was not a bad budget dram. But yeah, so far it's been a mixed bag. Of course, we are getting into more premium territory today with our 18 year old here. This one was matured primarily in bourbon casks and then it was finished in first fill Oloroso casks. Now we don't know how long this finish was for, but the sherry definitely left its mark. Anyway, Tomatin is a brand that seems to be on the up and up. It's getting more popular these days. Now it's still not a popular whiskey, but it's definitely got more notoriety than it had before. When I first got into drinking, maybe 10, 12 years back, this was pretty obscure stuff. When I first got into drinking, that doesn't sound back in the day. I didn't see too much of this stuff around. And when I did, I would always make the same joke to my friends. I'd say, hey guys, do you want to buy a bottle of tomatoes? I'm funny. Tomatin sounds like tomato. I think the first bottle of Tomatin I ever tried was the 14 year old port finish. Uh, I've also tried the 12 year old cast strength and of course the 12 year old and the legacy that I just mentioned. And I have to say on the whole, I do like Tomatin, but I've never had one that's blown me away. For me, they tend to be good, but forgettable. I can't say the distillate ever really stood out to me. We have a lot of gentle fruits in there, some sweetness. Um, maybe a little bit generic, but with the right cask play and with a bit of age, they can put out some genuinely interesting stuff. And it does seem like we've got both of those things here. We've got the classic bourbon maturation with a sherry finish. We've got a full 18 years in the barrels, so it could be a good one. Let's jump into the review and find out. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. For our specs, this one comes in at a respectable 46%. It is non-chill filtered and our color is natural. So you guys can check out our natural color there. I'm not a big fan of Tomatin bottles and usually I like the mostly glass look, but just this one doesn't do very much for me. I don't love the logo. I don't love the brown label. It's fine, I guess. I'll give it uh, two and a half out of five. It doesn't say anything about being non-chill filtered or natural color on the bottle. We have to look to the box for that. It does mention the first spill Oloroso casks on the front. It gives us some tasting notes. So our info is okay, but not great. Our bottle's okay. It's fine. I added a splash of water. Let's try our nose. Okay, that's nice. That's a, it's a very bright, yeasty fruitiness. We have some red fruits in here, some cinnamon from the sherry casks for sure. Loads of toffee, getting like strudels, like apple strudels or berry strudels. Uh, we have some stone fruit in here, like peaches, pears, nice orchard notes. We have powdered sugar in here. We have a touch of mint, a touch of licorice. Again, it's bright. It's not as oaky or as heavy as you might expect from an 18 year old. Now our palette. Mouth coating. Big sherry here. Much more sherry than the nose suggested. Um, chocolate. Chocolate mousse. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate mousse. Cinnamon. Dark berries. There's raisins, molasses, peaches, marmalade. Again, a little bit yeasty. And now our finish. Okay. Oak, um, big spices here. Baking spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, touch of pepper. Uh, it's also fruity. I'm getting apricots. 
I'm getting orange blossom, I'm getting tannins, uh, more chocolate mousse, more licorice, and cherry nibs. It's a medium finish. So this is one of those whiskeys that gets more interesting as I sat down with it for the review. I did like it when I popped it. I've liked it since I've had it. But yeah, the more I dug into those notes and sort of like broke it down for the review, the more I started to enjoy it. This is definitely not my favorite 18 year old whiskey, but it's probably my favorite Tomatin. Uh, we have a nice balancing act between the spirit and the casks here. Again, it is pretty bright for an 18 year old while still giving us the roundness of the age and some sophisticated oaky notes. But the first thing we notice here, as with most Tomatins, is the fruitiness. This is a very fruit forward whiskey and it's also a very sweet whiskey. It might be too sweet for some, but I don't think it's cloying. I think most people will get along with it. But yeah, we have some nice like stone fruits in here. We have berries, we have apricots, as well as some cool peripheral notes. I like the chocolate mousse in here. I like the yeasty character. Nothing really overtakes anything else. Again, it's bright, it's balanced. This is a very accessible whiskey. I think it's very easy to like. I can't imagine a lot of people disliking this. Again, unless you're very sensitive to sweetness or you're not a fan of sherry, but yeah, it's an easy one. It's very pleasant. My only issue here is the same issue I have with most Tomatins is that it just doesn't go far enough beyond nice. It doesn't do anything wrong. It just kind of fails to impress. It doesn't really leave like a lasting impression with me. I just wish it had a bolder character. And I'm not saying this is totally generic, but it is a little bit safe for me. I've tasted all of these flavors before. They fit together nicely, but in terms of flavor and character, this is just a little bit too pleasant and pretty for me. No risks were taken here. There's no challenge to this. Now that's my biggest criticism, but it's not all bad. Uh, I mentioned all the flavors in this that I enjoy. They work. Uh, probably the most intriguing aspect for me is the yeastiness. As far as I'm concerned, it saves this whiskey from being too generic. It gives it a little bit of a personality, a bit of an angle. But at the end of the day, is that enough? Yes. Yeah, it is. But again, I think it could go further. I think it should go further. Still, I like it. I'm going to give it a solid 86. I think it's a good 18 year old, but I'll say it one last time. I wish it had more character. I wish it had more bite. Still, I know a lot of people who are really big fans of this one, and I get it. Again, it doesn't really do anything wrong. I guess I'm just a little bit more picky and a bit more demanding when it comes to older whiskeys. You know, we are paying a premium for that age, and it is on the brand to deliver something that's extra special. And, you know, I just reviewed the uh, Glenlivet Licensed Dram. That's about half the price of this one, and I like it more. And I'm not saying this was a waste of money. I am going to enjoy this bottle and I do like the whiskey. Now, would I buy it again? Probably not. Would I recommend it? Yes, if you like Tomatin, if you're a fan of that style. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, even though it is a little bit forgettable, it's still a delicious whiskey. So for value, I think this one is just okay. And of course, 18 year olds are always a little bit tough to assess the value because we're paying so much more so I am going to come down on them a little bit harder. But even within the category of 18 year olds, there are some other 18 year olds within my market, at least that are roughly the same price, maybe even a little bit cheaper that I like more. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will disagree, but I prefer stuff like the Bullmore 18 dark and complex. I prefer stuff like the Altmore 18. In fact, there's a bunch that are around the same price that are just more interesting than this. But that's just here in Taiwan. I've heard that this is comparatively cheap in a lot of markets. And if that's true in your market and you're a fan of Tomatin and you want just a nice, pleasant, easy 18 year old whiskey, I think this one will definitely do the trick. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment and subscribe. That is always appreciated. Of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Tomatin 18 year old? What are your thoughts? Finally, down in the comments below, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.